Hello out there, I am Carlton T. Clay and this is a special edition of Carlton Says Real Talk. I am here with Augusta native, Shane Roundtree. What's, What's going up, on, man? What's up, man? We dressed doing? alike, man. Yeah, What's we dressed alike. All green, man. trying to copy my style. Man, you know. <laughs> I did graduate from T.W. Joseph, so I'm always oh, prepping some green. You're an eagle. Me eagle. My parents are eagles. Okay, then they're good people. <laughs> <laughs> Good people. Oh, family. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Well, thank you um, for being here today. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. No problem, man. So first, uh, let's get started. Let's get to know Shay. Um, Shay is an actor. Um, again, like I said, he is from Augusta. So Shay, how did you get started acting? Um, I got started at the Augusta Mini Theater. It used to be on 8th Street then, and it's on Dean's Bridge Road now. But um, I was in um, seventh grade, and um, you know, I used to get in trouble. <laughs> in class, class clown, talk all the time, very active. And um, my mom took me to see a play at the Imperial and um, it was the Gusta Mini Theater's production of My Dream. And I remember after the show, she asked me if I wanted to do that. And I said, yeah. So she enrolled me there and I've just been acting ever since. I have never stopped. Cool, yeah. that's what's up, that's what's up. Yeah. So what made you decide, hey, I'm gonna leave Augusta and I'm moving to LA? What was, what was, what was the point where I was like, you know what, I gotta move forward? Well. It's, it's kind of, it was weird how it happened because I was, like I said, I was acting in uh, middle school. I was acting throughout high school with the Augusta Mini Theater. Um, eventually went on to do a project with the players and Fort Gordon. Um, actually, I did a Fort Gordon Dinner Theater show my senior year. Then I went to um, school at Clark Atlanta University and um, I was majoring in speech communications and my minor was in theater and psychology and I'm still acting. Mm. And um, one day I got a call from my professor and was like, I know this lady who's an agent and they're doing a casting for Sabrina the Teenage Witch and they're casting an African-American male for like, you know, one of the starring roles and she doesn't have anybody on her roster that's African-American. And she asked me, could I recommend anyone? And that's how I got started in pursuing the, the physically pursuing acting career, you okay. know? And um, I started auditioning and I, I just really realized that's what I wanted to do with my life. So I started doing more and more things in the city of Atlanta, um, doing a lot of theater. I did stuff with Kenny Leon, mm -hmm. who was the artistic director at the Alliance Theater at the time. Um, every opportunity that I got to perform, I took it. And um, one thing led to another. And um, I remember, making a long story short, I ended up getting drumline. And the way Hollywood works, um, usually the studios cast the lead and supporting roles in movies. Mm. And usually the casting directors, and they cast the local, um, what they call day player roles, where you got one to two lines mm -hmm. and help keep the story going. They cast those locally, especially if they're shooting in different cities and states, because that's kind of part of the whole, the tax breaks that they get. Right. You know, we, you gotta hire so many people locally. So right. I was auditioning for day player roles for Drumline. Okay. And the vice president of casting at 20th Century Fox fell in love with my audition tapes and ended up giving me a supporting role. Wow, yeah. that's huge. Yeah, it was very huge then because yeah. there wasn't a lot of work in Atlanta then. And yeah. after I did that, then my agent told me, it was like, look, I mean, you know, ain't nowhere else to go here but down. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to give LA a shot, I think this would be the best time to do it. And so that's how I made the decision to go to California. Okay, cool, cool. Well, before we jump into Drumline, let's go back a little bit to mm -hmm. the Augusta Mini Theater. How has the Augusta Mini Theater, how did that, you know, how did that shape you as an actor? Like, mm -hmm. how did that make you want to, you know, pursue acting a little bit more? Like, what well, tools did you learn at the Augusta well, Mini Theater? Well, number one was discipline. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a very disciplined field and craft, you know? Um, learning the lines, going to rehearsals. I mean, when people watch TV and they see the show and they see the finished product, that's what they enjoy. Mm -hmm. But it's so much work and effort that goes into what you see. And if you don't develop that work ethic and, um, the, and, and strive for the best, then you, you won't make it in this business. So, you know, just that's the, being at the mini theater, that's where I first started the learning the rehearsal process. That's where I learned how to develop characters. That's where I learned how to um, learn lines. Mm -hmm. That's where I got comfortable performing in front of people. You know what I'm saying? So every foundation that you have as a performer, everything that you learn as a performer that, you know, makes you good, I got from Augusta Mini Theater. You know, mm -hmm. it was the first, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, jumping into the drum line, um, like how did that get in that part? Just go a little bit deeper. Like how did that make you feel? Like, well, how was that whole experience? You want the real story? I don't think I ever said this story. This real story is, is very amazing. Okay, man. let's hear the real story. And you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't, you know, people are all a different face, but I mean, it's, it's just, okay. 
I um, left school my senior year because I knew I wanted to act. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of opportunities to be on Dawson's Creek oh, um, my years ago. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it, and school was conflicting with those opportunities and I had to make a decision. Um, my grades were going down because mm -hmm. my focus was all on acting because I had made up in my mind what I wanted to do. Right. And people often say, man, you're so close, man. Why didn't you just finish? But I always tell people, you being somewhere where you don't want to be is like being in a prison. I don't care what it is because mm -hmm. you don't want to be there. And um, so anyway, make a long story shorter, I um, started auditioning for Drumline. Like I say, I would go in and read for different lives, um, different characters that mm -hmm. only had like one word or one line. And um, one week it was like, come in, we want you to read the tuba player. Mm -hmm. So I come in, I'm a tuba player. Yes, yeah, the tuba shouty or mm -hmm. whatever. Or they come in and have me read another line. And, I'm, and they have me come in another week and read another character. And then after that, I didn't hear from them anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, this particular time I was at home and I had a missed call on my caller ID and it said Drumline Productions. And I'm like, okay, what's this? And then so I go, I call the number back. And I'm like, hello, this is Shay Roundtree. Um, you call me and the girl's like, oh yeah, we got your number um, from casting. Um, I'm in charge of hiring the extras for the movie. Mm -hmm. And we saw that you had some band experience and we wanted to know if you would be interested in um, being an extra in, in Drumline. Mm -hmm. And then I told her, I said, mm, I don't know, I have to think about it. And so I cannot call you back. He said, yeah, but don't wait too long. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, cool. So I went in my room and I sat in my room and I, I looked at the pictures of my friends on the wall, different headshots of different actors, thinking about my mentors, I'm thinking about what I wanted to do in my life. And I said, you know what? No, I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. So I picked up the phone, called the girl back. I told her I wasn't interested. And she was like, you sure? It pays, what, $8 an hour? Mm -hmm. You'd be working for a couple of months every day is good money. And I told her, I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I'd rather work at the mall than be an extra in the movie that I can star in. Mm. And she said, you sure? I said, yeah. So that was the end of that phone call. Went to work at Wilson's Leather in Gwinnett Place Mall. And I'm at work, my pager went off. People had pagers back then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Phone, you know, so I'm, my pager goes off. And I didn't answer it. You know, it's the holiday season. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like right after Thanksgiving, it was busy. And I didn't, and it went off like two or three more times. I'm thinking it may be an emergency. So I called and it was Arlita Chappelle. Mm. She was the casting director of Drumline. And um, she was like, your agent got, I got permission from your agent to call you directly because they're not supposed to call you directly. Mm -hmm. And she said, the people in the studio want to see you play the drums, which was confusing because I didn't understand how, what that meant. Right. And uh, I said, well, Ms. Chappelle, I'm at work and you know, we don't get off to the mall clothes, you know? And so she was like, well, call me when you get off work. Mm -hmm. So holiday season, so it's holiday hours. Right. So it's about 11 o'clock and um, I called her and she told me to come down to her hotel room, and so they put me on tape. Mm. So by the time I got to her hotel, it was midnight. So I knock on this lady's door, and she might kill me for this, but she comes to the door, she has her headscarf on, her <laughs> robe, and her daughter's her assistant, uh. and she's like, hey, go in there and play drums. And I'm like, I told you I didn't play snare drums. So anyway, I went in, played the drums. Next day, um, my agency called me and was like, well, it was a temp a temporary person. We had a temp lady at the agency because my agent was out of town because it was mm -hmm. the holidays. And she told me, um, by the way, um, you got a rehearsal today at Southwest DeKalb High School. And I'm like, rehearsal for what? And it was like, they wanted to see you or something with the drums. I said, again, see. <laughs> I'm like, again, and I'm kind of, I told you guys I didn't play the snare drum. I'm like, why? Okay, so I get to Southwest DeKalb High School and I walk in the room and everybody's in there. Nick Cannon's in there, Orlando Jones is mm -hmm. in there. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. At this point, nobody told me I got cast in the mm -hmm. movie. Wow. And so the person that actually told me that I was cast in the movie and I was playing Big Rob first mm -hmm. was Orlando Jones. <laughs> at the first read through a rehearsal. I had none, I didn't even know the character I was playing because it was nothing that I auditioned right, for. Right, right. So, it, it was, so that's the real drumline story, wow. man. Wow, well there you have it. That's all I said, that's the real story. Right yeah. there, Shane Routry. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, let's fast forward a little bit here. Uh, let's go to this fall of Big Kids. Like mm -hmm. me, I watch Disney Channel a lot. Um, Shay Routry uh, was also in the movie Let It Shine. With okay. well, another person that you guys have seen on Carlton Says Real Talk, Courtney Gray, he also was mm -hmm. in the movie as well. Um, so how was that experience being on Let It Man, Shine? Man, Let It Shine was so much fun. Mm -hmm. it was for one, because I hadn't been home in a while. And um, they they called my agent and I auditioned. I just, I was in my living room mm -hmm. and I just filmed myself doing the scene, you know, you know, welcome to Atlanta, it's the Grand Slam rap final, whatever. 
And um, my manager called me about uh, a few weeks later and was like, they want to book you for Let It Shine. <laughs> no callback, no nothing, just That's straight dope. off the tape, man. So then it was an opportunity to get on a plane, come home, mm. see my family, you know what I'm saying? And um, I worked with um, Tyler. I did an episode of Everybody Hates Chris okay. years ago when Tyler was much smaller. Mm -hmm. And so we knew each other. So it was like, oh my God, man, you, you like 19 now, you're big. <laughs> And um, so we had a ball doing Let It Shine, man. It was, that was my first Disney project. Mm -hmm. And then um, Courtney B. Vance was in the movie. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it was nostalgic because I knew Courtney B. Vance because when I first moved to LA after I did Drumline, my first job was an NBC, I was a series regular on an NBC show. Mm -hmm. And at our Christmas party, I was the only black person there. And Courtney B. Vance came in. Mm -hmm. And he came in and he scanned the room and he looked around, he saw me, he came right over to my table. It was like, it's some more brothers in here. I was like, oh. you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it was like, it was cool, man. It was a great experience. All was like family, it was all fun, hard work, but it was fun, man. Ooh, yeah. ooh, that's great, that's great. Y'all, you know, the movie, oh, I've seen the movie, I bragged on the movie on the blog, and like I said, it's a really, really It's a movie. real good movie. Really like, it, it came out bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, filming, you know, you never know how the finished product is gonna be, and, um, and they ran it like Disney Channel killed it. It, it was did. so popular, yeah. and like, everywhere I go, kids, you know, some they don't know my name. They were like, "Mama, I still look like the guy that was in the purple suit." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but let it shine, man. I had, a, man, I enjoyed that. That was one of the, probably one of the best experiences of my life working with that cast and you know being a part of that project. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool, man. man. Well, say what future projects are you working on? What you got in the works going on right now? Um, be honest with you, I don't like to talk about oh, it. Okay. And I'm gonna tell you why, just, just for future people that's in the entertainment business, because the entertainment business is one fickle business where you know, they will tell you, okay, you're, okay, you're the guy, you're gonna be playing this in this mm -hmm. movie, and then the day before you're supposed to show up to work, it's somebody else. Oh. <laughs> you know, ask Terrence Howard how he found out he wasn't in um, Iron Man anymore. He that's was listening to the radio. Really? It's, it's really like that. It's so. Oh. You know, I try to not talk about things yeah. until they actually are concrete. You know what I'm okay. saying? But I do have a, a a lot of irons in the fire. You okay. know what I'm saying? And I try to keep my, you know, if you look at TV, I'm still around. So, yeah. so yeah. but um, but I got some things in the work. Um, one thing I can talk about, I'm actually going to produce my first project. Okay. That I'm pretty excited cool. about um, that we're going to be submitting for the um, festival circuit. Okay. So I'm working with a director who already previously had a project in the Cannes Film Festival. Oh wow! So um, it's a project I'm, I'm, I'm pretty. I think it's going to be do pretty well. So okay. I'm excited about that. So cool. Yeah. Great, great. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, another question here. Uh, just keeping it local as well. Um, like how important are like the Augusta Media Theater and the Augusta Players? Just different areas in the arts. How's that important to people mm -hmm. in here in Augusta? It's very important. I had a young lady. I spoke at a um, church tonight. And I had a young lady, um, she was up in the age around in the late 20s, 30s, and she was asking me how do someone like, get started at her age. And I had to tell her, I was like, you know, there's the entertainment business as a profession, and then there's the entertainment or acting uh, as craft. Mm. And whether it's um, acting or singing or whatever, um, they both move simultaneously. Mm. And you have to do both. Like a lot of people try to move and like, I just want to be a professional singer. I want to be a professional actor or a professional dancer. But what have you done? Mm -hmm. And it's usually nothing. Right. And well, how do you know you're good at it? Because most people that are doing it professionally have been doing it for free for years. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to develop your skill and develop your craft. So you, you need local theater. You need community theater. You need regional theater to, to hone your skills. So. You know, I tell them, I say, you know, you do plays with Augusta Mini Theater, do plays with Augusta Players, Fort Gordon, always find opportunities to do what you do, even if it's doing something at church or mm -hmm. at school. And what happens is you, you, you develop a work history. You know, just because you doesn't get paid doesn't mean you didn't get the experience right. or the skill. And people take that for granted. So you have your resume. It's like, I've done the Wiz, I've done this, I've done that. And then, you know, you get your pictures together and you submit yourself to an agent. You know, they interview you. They're, you know, um, have you do a monologue or something in their office. And, you know, if they like you, they'll represent you. And right. that's when you start getting the real big auditions. And not only just theater, um, Augusta State has a film department. Start doing student films. And especially in this multimedia age, you want to, especially now, because when I got in the game, it was all still monologue driven. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you learn this line, and I'm going to do this scene from The Wiz, or I'm going to do this from an August Wilson play. 
But now, because it's in the media age, you know, some ad, some agents just want to see some tape, like what have you done? And so they want to see the the local commercials and uh, the student films and you know to see you know what you're working with. So I mean, get involved in all of that stuff, man. Do what you do, and the money will come. That definitely will come. You know. Yeah, yeah. So so, what advice do you have for people like say who just who are trying to get started but they just don't know how? Like, what's what's your advice? Get started where you at first. You know what I'm saying? You know, and then do market research and show business. The word is show business. There's more letters in business than show. Mm. Learn the business of the business. Um, I used to, um, before I moved to LA, I used to you know, go to Barnes and Nobles and I would get all the books on how to make it in show business, how to become a working actor. Mm. And, you know, I didn't have much money, so I didn't buy the books. I would just sit in there and I would have my notebook and I would take notes out of the book, man, and just learn the business, learn that Okay, we're in Augusta area. Where are the biggest media markets? We got, you know, Charlotte, North Carolina, mm -hmm. um, Atlanta, Georgia, New Orleans. You know, that's all close. And Wilmington, North Carolina, it's not a big market as far as population, but that's considered Hollywood East because Screen Gym Studios mm -hmm. is in Wilmington. So these are the areas that are around you. So you know, you know, once you start local and you got the confidence and the skill that you've developed here in the city or wherever you are. And then you start branching out. And as you branch out, then you get to the big stage. It's no different than the guy that, you know, who played Pop Warner football in middle school and high school and college. And now I'm in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You know, people want to skip. They, you know, some people want me to just pick up the phone like, hey, I'm doing a movie. Let me put you in it. Not saying that type of stuff doesn't happen, but that's not a career. Right. You know, that's 15 minutes of fame. Right. Or, you know, that's the guy he was on that. You never see him again. But for people who are serious about the craft, man, that's just how it, that's how it goes. It's not easy. It's long. I mean, I've been doing this. I'm 35 now, man. I've, I've been at this since I was about 14 years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and you see me now, but yeah. it's been all working up to that. It right. wasn't an overnight thing. So. All about progress. It definitely yeah. is all about progress. So. And patience and endurance. And you're going to get probably a thousand no's. Just look, for people that know me and see me on TV and are proud of me and support me, I'm going to tell you like this. For every commercial that you see me on, there were probably a hundred that I didn't get. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the game. Yeah. Really. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So for those of you who are big fans of Mr. Rontree here, if people want to reach out to you, how can your fans reach you? You can find me, you can follow me on Twitter at at SheaRoundtree.com. That's S-H-A-Y-R-O-U-N-D-T-R-E-E. And you can email me also at SheaRoundtree at gmail.com. All right, man. Well, since this is a blog about television, I have to ask, what TV shows are you watching if you're watching? Man, I watch everything. <laughs> I watch everything. Again, uh, that's another tip. Um, watch, if, study your craft. You know, if you want to be a musician, you got to listen to all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. I watch everything. It's nothing really. I don't watch much reality. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Only reality I really like is the court shows. Mm -hmm. Mathis and Maury in Divorce Court. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I'm, um, favorite shows that I'm watching now, um, NCIS is one of my favorite shows. Walking Dead is one of my favorite shows. Scandal is one of my Scandal, favorite shows. Yes, yes. Um, Supernatural, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I watch different types of stuff. Um, How I Met Your Mother is one of my favorite shows. Okay. And, I, and I still watch the classics. I still watch Good Times and Sanford and Son. Yeah. And, you know, stuff like so that. I was going to take a, a, a yeah. adventure to TV land every yeah, now but and I love TV. Yeah. CSIs, man, so many good shows. Elementary is a good show. So many shows. Um, yeah, man, I, I'm, a, I'm a TV junkie. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, yeah. that's, that's going to wrap it up here so. for, uh, you know, Across the Says Real Talk. Shay, thank you so oh, much. Oh, man, thanks for, uh, a lot for having no me, No problem, man. No problem. Next time, next time man, wear something else. Man, man, uh, man please stop spying on me. Then wear you else. shouldn't be so cute. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's it. That's wrapping it up for Crossing Stage. Yeah, Thank y'all so much for joining us, and we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Peace. <laughs>